You gotta think about it too. I'm sitting there working at Macy's, standing at the register, you know, trading time for money. I didn't want to, you know, go to school. I didn't want to work a nine to five, and I just wanted to focus on my passion, like which was YouTube and the automation. I just posted a video on YouTube. It made five thousand dollars. I only did one time, posted it, and it did what it did. My mind just shifted completely. What were your parents' thoughts on you with this YouTube dream? They think you were crazy. <laughs> YouTube expert David Omari. He's known as the YouTube millionaire. He has honed his skills in growing channels to millions of views, resulting in substantial passive income. Can you talk about just some of the crazy numbers you've been able to generate in the YouTube automation oh, uh, yeah. business? Ad revenue alone, yeah. the biggest month I had was like $140,000 a month. Millions and millions of views. I went from owner operator to now just overseeing the business as the owner. So what's the formula for success for a perfect YouTube video? What you need to do, and this is literally how I went from zero college dropout to building a seven-figure online business with my YouTube automation channels. Hey guys, welcome to this very special episode of the Passionate Few Podcast. It's your host, Omar, and today we sit down with an incredible guest as we sit down with none other than David Omari, a 27-year-old entrepreneur who's built a multi-million dollar empire out of YouTube, but not in the way you might think. So thanks so much for being on the show today, David. Thank you, Omar, for having me. Appreciate you so much, man. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Thanks for doing this here in Vegas, man. We got the whole beautiful cityscape, oh, yeah. too. Had to, man. We're doing it big time. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely, man. So let's get into this, man. Before people, um, you know, when they thought about YouTube, they thought about, you know, building their own content machine, having their face on it. But what you really specialize in is YouTube without using your face, right? right. Building automated systems mm -hmm. and a business that creates passive income. Right. But talk to me a little bit about kind of your credentials and kind of what experience you have, and then we'll kind of get into your story for the audience. Yeah, for know. sure. So over my career in the last 10 years, so I've been on a platform for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So literally a decade of my life has just been dedicated to YouTube and YouTube automation. I have four 100,000 subscriber plaques from individual channels, and I have a gold play button, which mm -hmm. is for a million subscribers. Wow. Uh, I also have another one on the way in the mail. Um, we just started a brand new channel this year that's really doing really good, and it's already about to hit 100,000 subscribers probably before the end of July. So another plaque is on the way, but uh, over my you know decade of me just doing it, I've accumulated over a billion views. Um, wow. Majority of those views coming from a single channel, which kind of like was my endeavor into YouTube automation when I kind of like discovered the business model and just seeing how I can like scale it out if I just took myself out of the process. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, just a YouTube automation expert, you know, just was kind of like my last resort. I didn't want to, you know, go to school. I didn't want to work a nine to five. And I just wanted to focus on my passion, like which was YouTube and the automation side of it, yeah. And so you said you've been at it uh, for 10 years. So you're 27 now. So you started this when you were, what, 17, 18? Yes, sir. And it started with video games, if, if I understand yeah. correctly, right? Yeah. So walk me through that, because I think a lot of people listening, they may consume YouTube, right? They may watch other people play games, right? They might participate in it that way. Mm -hmm. But they had no clue that you could even start that way. So how... How did it, do you remember your first YouTube video oh, and how yeah. that whole how, sort of thing like started? Like it was yesterday. Like, <laughs> so originally I started with sneakers mm -hmm. um, because I just, I'm a sneaker head. Like I've always been in sneakers, but I realized that if I wanted to grow a, you know, a scalable business, I can't you know, buy a new pair of Jordans every time mm -hmm. I need to post another video because I'm just going to be dumping my YouTube check in the videos. And so I said, you know what? Why not, you know, try this gaming thing? I was super game addict. I still play video games to this day, but I was really heavy in it back then. And so I made a completely different channel because I learned back then early, like, you know, if you're going to do YouTube, stick to one topic and that one topic alone, don't try and mesh the two. Um, and it was gonna be faceless content where I'd be using my voice, but I wouldn't be showing my face or anything like that. So I decided to you know, make my first gaming video, it was a GTA video, got 100 views in the first month, and I said, you know, for a video to get 100 views in a single month, on a channel with zero subscribers, I must have did something right. So, right. And this is uh, Grand Theft Auto when you say GTA, right? Yeah, 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 Grand Theft Auto 5. And so I was like, you know what? why not like try this again so a month went by and i said I'm, I'm gonna dabble with this again so i ended up posting another video the video ended up getting over a half a million views in like two weeks and it ended up making me five thousand dollars wow yeah and from that day i just never stopped uploading like yeah. it just it was i was addicted from the start and it really wasn't even me being motivated by the money it was just me being super creative and wanting to like put my passion into 
what I was interested in doing at the time. What do you think it was that was different about that first video going from, you know, just getting 100 views to then the second video making you, you know, $5,000 getting half a million views? What was the difference? That is a great question. So, and that, I love that you asked that question because mm -hmm. nobody ever asked that question, but yeah. that's, that's brilliant. That's really gonna help a lot of people. Um, so that first video was innovation, mm. super innovative. Just me jumping in the water, not knowing how to swim. A month after me kind of watching, you know, the space and like kind of studying why my video did what it did and how I reached the certain people. And I was like looking at analytics, trying to understand that. I said, okay, so now I know what works in this industry mm -hmm. and then this niche let me try to do it that way like how it already works right so i didn't reinvent the wheel i just did exactly what you know people that inspired me with different video ideas to do right back then a very very popular topic um with gta was helping people make money in the game because it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like real life right they, right. they play the game <laughs> like it's real life you buy lamborghinis penthouses <laughs> clubs all that like you can literally yeah. do all that it's like a whole virtual life so people really like get addicted to like getting money in the game mm -hmm. and so i figured why not just focus on that aspect of the game help people get money in the game and it's going to drive a ton of views and it's going to make a lot of money and that's exactly what it did so being more like taking more inspiration from what already worked on the platform. Right. I learned that early on, right? Understanding the thumbnail psychology, understanding um, the watch time metrics, the click through rates, all these little things that I was learning in that one month when I was just watching that small video kind of just do what it was doing. And so that was a huge like shift um, from the first video to second video. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that just kind of made a huge change in general in the direction that my life went because <laughs> I, like I said, I was just doing this on a whim. Like, I really wanted to uh, try YouTube and get into it, but I didn't know it was going to take off for me that soon. Yeah. Like, in a month. It was it was crazy. And how old were you when you got that first $5,000 check from YouTube? <laughs> it's probably like 19 years old, 18, 19 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was playing with YouTube for a little bit. I had my sneaker channel made a little bit of money, but it wasn't anything crazy. Like, I think my biggest video on there was a Yeezy video, and it got like, you know, Yeezy shoes. It was yeah. like... 12,000 uh, views or something like that. I may have made like a couple, couple 10, yeah. 20, 30 maybe dollars. I don't even remember. But yeah. but when that switched that game in, man, that that would like change my life. Because yeah. I never saw no money like that. And then you got to think about it too. I'm sitting there working at Macy's, standing out of the register, you know, trading time for money. How much were you making at Macy's? Oh my goodness, making like $6 an hour, six, seven bucks <laughs> an hour. Just, yeah, yeah it, was, it was bad. But you know, when you have that mindset, like I have to go to work, uh, put time in work hourly to make money and then you have the other mindset it's like I just posted a video on YouTube it made five thousand dollars and I only made the video like only did one time posted it, and it did what it did mm -hmm. in two weeks it just my mind just shifted completely yeah I 100%. went from a you know working and putting time in to get money for hourly work to okay producing something creative that people are really interested in and learning how to leverage that and then making money that way so yeah no i love that and we'll get we'll get more into your story too but fast forward today and i know you've built this to a you know multiple millions of dollars multi yeah. multi seven figure business can you talk about just some of the crazy numbers you've been able to generate in terms of um channels and the youtube automation oh, uh, yeah. business like what's so, really possible for people out so there wondering ad revenue alone yeah. the biggest month i had was like a hundred and forty thousand dollar month wow. um millions and millions of views just just crazy um with brand deals um if i was to add the brand deal money to that it was anywhere from 300 to 400 thousand dollars in that single month um wow man it's just it's so so much money has come from youtube yeah um i also sold off one of my channels for over a hundred thousand dollars somebody mm -hmm. bought the channel for over a hundred thousand dollars um you know even still to this day we just started a brand new channel um, and it's in the anime niche and I don't know, I don't know anything about anime. Like I just yeah. don't, but, um, I got to the point to where now I have a channel manager managing company where they manage channels and they grow them. So I'm completely hands off. Yeah. So and it's so fully automated. Yeah. The first month that on that channel this year in January made $600, so almost $700. The second month I made 5,000. Mm. Then the next, next month after that I made 7,000 and now it's like averaging out $5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just incredible to see that where i am now i'm just an overseer i don't like somebody asked me earlier like how many hours a day do you spend doing this i'm like i don't spend any hours anymore like right it's all like i basically got into the point to where i went from operator owner operator to now just overseeing 
the mm-hmm. business as the owner and having all these people in positions running these teams to keep pushing this content out to keep generating those passive. Dollars. I love that. And, and it's funny because I heard one of your other interviews before it said you always, your parents, I believe one of them was like a CPA. And yeah. so you always would see them and wanted to be an entrepreneur, but we're trying different things. Can you, you know, take us back to like, what were some of the early dreams you had of wanting to be an entrepreneur, maybe hustles you tried before YouTube, yeah. just, just so to humanize your story a little bit to the audience. Listening. Oh yeah. And, nah, um, so my dad is a, a CPA certified public accountant, got a master's finance and accounting and um just growing up seeing him work on his business seeing him you know go to bed at three in the morning get up at five six to get back to it Mm -hmm. that just instilled something in me to be like to want me to be you know my own man my own boss and you know do the things he was doing he was driving nice cars you know we lived in a pretty nice home nice middle class family It, it was real chill so i just said man like i would love to be able to be my own man and do what I want to do right of course I did try to do what he was doing but Mm -hmm. I just it just wasn't my thing I just I just couldn't see it (laughs) being my thing but um I think the only thing I may have tried I think really YouTube was like my real first like entrepreneur I think maybe I tried to resell sneakers yeah and I did I think I resold a Yeezy shoe um but that was like I never did anything else than YouTube like that was like my only like (laughs) <laughs> like endeavor what, what what were your parents thoughts on you with this youtube dream they think you were crazy so um <laughs> i'm one of those people that's like you know i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell somebody mm-hmm. what my dreams are because i'm afraid they're gonna crush them mm. before i even can attempt them right? right imagine me telling my parents i'm quitting school i'm quitting my job and i'm just going full on on youtube they would have told me no until they were blue in the face yeah Right. And I knew that. So I'm like, let me get this channel to 100,000 subscribers, have a play button, show them the play button. So now they know that it's serious and it's actually something that Mm -hmm. I've obtained and I'm really good at. So that's when they really found out, like, oh, he's really serious. They knew I was doing it, but they didn't know how serious I was about it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me have something to show for. So it's tangibly they can feel it and they'll see like, okay. He's going to be good with this thing. I can see it. Yeah. yeah. And then that was your first channel, right? And on that channel, that involved you, I believe it was like playing the video game. Right. So then it had a little bit of your personality in the mix. Yeah. So where does the shift happen from your own, you know, f- f- your own channel to a faceless YouTube channel? Like, where does the light bulb go off for you where you see the scalability, the biz up? So Walk us through that. It was it was a scary time. So <laughs> that gaming channel got to that half a million subscribers mm-hmm. right and then i had another channel get to two hundred thousand subscribers was your face on those channels or no not at all no nah, just my voice mm. but i got to a point to where i was just like this is not scary. like i'm being so spread thin mm-hmm. i need to figure out a way to like take myself out of the position of this business or i'm not going to ever be able to grow it past ten thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. right and so um i saw an opportunity in the market a new game was coming out fortnite mm-hmm. i said man why not you know take the most popular clips co- compile them in a video add some transformative content around it, make it funny and see where it goes and um you know i was like i know i can't do that on my own i tried it the first month mm-hmm. it didn't work out and so i said you know what let me go ahead and hire a video editor right mm-hmm. um at the time didn't really need a script writer but i needed a voice actor and I needed a thumbnail artist so i hired those three positions and you know how did you hire them upwork fiverr twitter Really? The first time it was Twitter. Wow. The, that's because early on in those days, it was like most people found thumbnail artists, um, video editors, because we all were in like little networks and little Discord servers and stuff like yeah. that, like communities, and we all communicated. And so, like, if you ever asked my, like, yo, who edits your thumbnails or who does this? Oh, go on Twitter. Right. So it was Twitter before Fiverr, but that was because it was more gaming. Like gaming has this huge like community on Twitter mm-hmm. of like freelancers that do edits for gaming content. So originally it was started off of Twitter before yeah. even like, you know, finding out about Fiverr and Upwork and taking it to that next level. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's where the shift happened. And that channel, you know, first month, they didn't do too well. It didn't do too hot. But the second month made seventy thousand dollars in a month. No way, seventy thousand. It was like sixty-eight thousand. Wow. And it was just because of how hot that game was, and that's yeah. what I learned too early on. Was just how, how often were you guys posting? 
ooh, like I think it was supposed to like every other day, every day trying to like it depends on what came out in the game and what kind of yeah. like new stuff was going on in the game. But it was it was a very uh very frequent frequent uploads on the channel. But that's what I learned early on, just like stop trying to focus so much on leveraging the likeness of myself and just leverage the likeness of others. Mm. Right? I knew people didn't wanna, you know really listen to my voice too much anymore mm -hmm. so i was like why not you know leverage other people that are in the space that people really like and i can transform it and make it better and people want to enjoy it and that's mm -hmm. how i kind of caught on to it and it has more scalability than it being dependent on your face you always exactly. keep it interesting you need to film a new video you needing to keep the audience hooked yeah because i know a lot of youtubers we we're talking earlier about other youtubers who have successful channels mm -hmm. a lot of them end up in what they call the golden handcuffs right yeah because you got a channel with a million subscribers even if you're making money the second someone else's face is in it like it's not going to do the same numbers as if it's just you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can get trapped by your own success. Exactly. Whereas thinking as a business owner, you could have multiple faceless channels and automate those systems and have, you know, five or 10 or however many channels. Mm -hmm. And you could do one for yourself if you want. Exactly. But your income is not limited to your own pressure to perform on exactly. camera. Yeah, that's very exactly. interesting. And that's literally like you just you couldn't set it no better. It's just <laughs> understanding that you could really have. I almost, I almost like to say it's like digital real estate. Mm. Like all of these channels are like just digital properties, right? Mm -hmm. And just over time, just getting revenue, getting views, and just growing. Um, and I could never see myself. And don't get me wrong, I've tried. I had those two channels, but at the time when I, they were growing, I had other channels I was trying to try. I was had other games I was trying to try, and I could not. I remember one time before I even jumped into YouTube Automation, it was a time where I literally was uploading. Uploaded a GTA video, a 2K video, Call of Duty video. I was uploading on all these different <laughs> channels, and I was just like, "There's half. There has to be a more a better way. Like, there's no way. Like, I, and I'm sitting here trying to get greedy to get more views and stuff. And I'm like, I just need to hire somebody to do this. Cause mm. If I can do that, then I can take all the pressure off of me editing all of the. I mean, in a single day, I would sit and edit all these different videos and post them. Mm. And it was just like, yeah, man, I got to get out of that. I got to yeah. get out of that. And um, just like really separate myself from it. Yeah. A couple questions there, man. Number one is one thing I noticed is that a big part of what you do is finding quality talent yes. because you need on YouTube. It's not just a video, right? Mm. It's somebody to actually, if there's a script, if there's edits in it, it's the thumbnail, it's the titling, right? And it's kind of like a concert of all these things coming together. What's your best advice to find great quality editors, great quality thumbnail designers and teams to really scale a YouTube business? So what you need to do before, because most people, they just go and they, they look at what the freelancers post as like their examples. Mm -hmm. And typically, they those are not their examples. They're just <laughs> using the best content. So what you do with a video editor is you get a 30 second sample to make sure the editor is at the level that you want them to be at. Because a lot of times people hire editors not knowing like their work and they're already like, $15 into a video and the video editing is terrible, right? Right. Same thing with the script writer, right? Get a sample script, small sample script. Uh, voiceover artists is good because you can hear their voice on the post, so you don't really have to like vet them too much. Mm -hmm. um, of course, asking for their clients and their work that they've done before. Maybe they have an example YouTube video that's already on YouTube. You can go and see if that's something that you would like for your channel. And then just the thumbnail artists also getting a sample from thumbnail artists because a lot of those thumbnail artists, they just take pictures off of YouTube and they use it to market their work mm -hmm. when in reality, it's not their work. So yeah, you just always wanna get samples. That's how you find quality, quality, quality. And that honestly is the hardest piece of the puzzle. It's yeah. not making the videos it's not getting the views it's not because that stuff comes when you figured out the formula and you, and you got team. the right equation yeah. right it's the team building that people struggle with the most because they they they're trying to go really cheap and the baseline is like fifty dollars like typically like that's like the base mm -hmm. right and that's still a cheap video for right? an editor or right for, yeah but I mean, I've had videos I spent fifty dollars on, make ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? And so it's 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 like, and that's just like the base for like even all of those elements. Fifteen dollars for the scriptwriter, fifteen dollars for the, uh, um, fifteen dollars for the um, voice actor, fifteen dollars for the video editor, and five dollars for the thumbnail, mm -hmm. right? That's fifty dollars right there, and then that that small budget I've been able to you know produce that mm -hmm. anime channel. I was telling you about doing five k a month. We're only spending forty-two dollars per video. Wow! So it's less than fifty dollars. Yeah. Right now, of course, there's channels like I have an NBA channel where 
my videos are 200 to 400 dollars because i'm just big on the quality right right but yeah team building finding the team and just being the producer like yeah. think about it like a show right think about it like your favorite tv show you're the producer like maybe a tyler perry film tyler perry's a producer and he has all these actors playing these roles making sure the movie is the best it's the same thing with the youtube channel a youtube automation channel with that you produce what you know the audience is going to like mm. and then you build upon it yeah, yeah. No, i love that and then in terms of niches that you've seen people have success in, i know you've had success in, in mm. a few different niches mm. you know what are some of the niches that you recommend for people in present day 2023 going into oh, 2024 yeah. people just starting what are niches you have your eye on as the most profitable the most scalable that you recommend a and then maybe niches b that you know you recommend people kind of stay away from or just be you know think yeah. twice about to be careful yeah, with. yeah yeah and i love that because that's that's a great question and i'm gonna be super transparent with that so i i really like the nba niche in 2023 it's it's awesome there's so much drama you watching the finals yeah i'm watching the finals yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely definitely and so just that opportunity right there to start up yeah. perfect because there's gonna be a lot of clips and a lot of moments that happen um also tv recaps and just like movie recaps have been going like eight just mm -hmm. going crazy on youtube so that's a that's a niche that i have my eye on um the sports niche in general will always just be good because you can just make the thumbnails look so appealing um niches to stay away from meditation rain sounds people would think that's what youtube automation is it's absolutely not now back in the day you could do it and make money from, but you cannot do it anymore um mm -hmm. there, there's they say there are still channels that are monetized from it but i feel like youtube slowly is weeding those channels out and so a lot of people try and get into that but absolutely stay away from it yeah. in 2023 because it's not going to make you any money it's just going to get you demonetized because they get s saturated or what are the things to look for so the reason why you can't do it is because the content is considered reused what people do is they take the content from like pexels.com they put the video on there they download the sounds from orangefreesounds.com they put the sound on the track and then they just upload the video mm. and then youtube's like okay there's a million of these videos on the platform it's reused it's not it's not anything that's original it, it just goes against what they really want that's mm. why youtube's against like a lot of ai softwares and stuff and that's something i want to touch on too you can use ai for scripts but you still need somebody to actually read the script so you know it makes sense mm -hmm. um a lot of people just use ai for scripts and then their youtube video it, it's not aligned with how a youtube video is supposed to be formulated like it's mm -hmm. not it's not gonna flow the correct way right there's certain loops in a youtube video that you have to put in there to make sure the viewer stays for a long duration mm -hmm. right and so ai voiceovers you cannot do that like there's so many channels that do it and they always get demonetized because you yeah. can't use a robot's voice. Um, AI video editing softwares are good. You can do that um, where they add the text on there for you. And of course, AI thumbnail softwares are good. But when it comes to scripts and voiceovers, voiceovers, absolute no-no. If you're gonna do it for a script, just make sure you have somebody proofread it that's actually a script writer so you get the best result from that. So I love it, bro. You're giving so much game right now. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's unlimited. I, I can I, talk to you for hours. Bro. I know, I love <laughs> this. You you're like a mad scientist with all the <laughs> yeah. YouTube stuff. So take me back to, to one part of it. You know, when it comes to having a successful YouTube channel, it comes mm -hmm. to having a successful YouTube video. What have you found in all of your years of experience, right? 10 years plus at this stage mm -hmm. is the perfect YouTube formula for a video, regardless of niche, right? Cause I'm sure mm -hmm. there's common denominators. Mm -hmm. So what's the formula for success for a perfect YouTube video? Hook, value, and call to action. And that's really in pretty much any kind of video, even if you're shooting an ad, that's like mm -hmm. the, that's the formula that always works. So let's break it down, hooking the viewer in, right? In the first five seconds of your YouTube video, your viewer should already be locked in and wanting to watch the rest of that video, right? Your, your title is asking them a question or sparking some type of curiosity and the thumbnail also is adding to that curiosity for the person to click through that video. Mm -hmm. Once they click through that video, that first five seconds needs to answer the question or answer whatever that title says and give them what they came for. Because if they get in the video and you're lollygagging and you're, yeah, they, it, they they are so not interested the um you know the the attention span is really short now because TikToks and all the short form content so it was really hard to keep people engaged so give them what they came for in the first five seconds right and then get into your intro introduce yourself and tell them exactly what the video is about and get right into it mm -hmm. so introduction should be no more than 20 seconds um i think that's been like the best for me and also just taking the peak of your video Mm -hmm. So this could be like a highlight moment in your video. Maybe let's just say 
and I'll just use the prank niche for example. That's not a YouTube automation niche, but I'm just gonna say for example, right? Mm -hmm. You take the highlight moment of a prank where you're about to throw your girlfriend's iPhone, brand new iPhone in the pool, and right before it touches the pool, that's where the clip cuts in the beginning and it makes the viewer watch all the way to when it happens. And when it comes to the viewer duration, you wanna make sure that person is watching at least 40% of the video. Most people, um, typically the average is like 20 to 30% if mm -hmm. you're like, you know, just starting out doing pretty good. But if you want to be like above average, 40 to 60% is where you want to be because that average viewer duration is just telling YouTube that, hey, people are spending more time watching this. Let's push this out to more people that we think are exactly like these people viewing this so we can get you some more attraction and some more views. So formula, simple, is just, you know, your CTR, which is the amount of impressions, which is click-through rate, the impressions over the amount of people that actually click through the video, the higher your CTR, the more YouTube is going to push your video out. And so typically the average is like, or a good average is like 6 to 7%. I have channels where I get 17%, mm -hmm. right? But it's really hard to get those numbers. But um, also just, you know, understanding your hook and making sure it's sweet enough to make the viewer watch all the way through that video. You really, the goal is to get the person to watch 100%, but typically that's, that's, that's not something that typically happens because everybody clicks off, they get an ad, they go somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. And then just giving the viewer value, man, like quality. A lot of people, they put out videos and the quality just lacks and so they wonder why like people are not, you know, really filling their channel or not trying to, you know, their, why their channel's not growing is because the quality and the value is not there. Like people need to leave your video like, man, I really got something from this either it be entertainment, education, just something valuable that you give them, and then a strong call to action. That can be, hey, if you're interested in more content like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you wanna do that at the end. A lot of people do it in the beginning, um, and I mean, that's cool, I do it too, but I think it's, it works best at the end. It's kinda like, you know, giving them the opportunity to do that instead of like asking them for something in the beginning it's like hey i gave you a, this nice piece of content now in return can you give me that subscribe mm -hmm. so that's kind of like the formula so hook value call to action that's like that's perfect yeah. yeah and then in terms of longevity right like a lot of people have the question of you know how long does it take you know for me to actually blow up and get momentum and then if i do get momentum how sustainable is it right mm -hmm. so what are your thoughts on that for people listening who are going like holy shit like this yeah. is amazing i want to try this but like yeah. maybe they're intimidated or they think you know i'm not a producer i don't have experience how long is this going to take like yeah yeah no. what are some stories or examples of people that maybe didn't have backgrounds because i'm sure you've helped mm -hmm. a lot of people at this stage or seen a lot of people have success mm -hmm. that maybe have nine to five jobs and want to have you know uh, an investment piece on the side yeah. or people you know turn this into their full-time thing so mm -hmm. what's really possible and how long does it take you know so what's, what's the right way to think about it time-wise it can be instantly or mm -hmm. it can take months if not a year typically you know with the people that I help and I coach it's typically two weeks is where they start to see traction like that's like the average amount of time it takes mm -hmm. um, but for people who just don't have that background and don't know it can take time because you know you make mistakes and those mistakes can set you back years um, but what I will say is on you know a sweet note I've seen you know some of my clients I had one client in a soccer niche faceless YouTube automation make forty two thousand dollars from a single video in two months Wow yeah but on the flip side of that I've also seen people you know make four dollars their first month on youtube like it's 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 yeah. really no it's no guarantees that it's gonna happen right away but if you follow the formula you know the equation you can solve it you, you'll get the result but longevity wise i want to speak to that there's there's one major way and don't get me wrong google and youtube is going to be around forever like i'm I know I'm not going to outlive Google or YouTube. Like, we know that. <laughs> right. There's going to be around longer than we're going to live. Right. So it's like, it's if, if you know that it's going to outlive you, then you know that it's something that's going to be sustainable and something that's going to have longevity. But what I will say to that is the, the best way to make YouTube sustainable is instead of targeting the browse feature, target the search. Now, search is a battle because you're battling just trying to get ranked at the top and sometimes that's very stressful mm -hmm. um and it takes a lot of time depending on how you know how many people or how much competition is in a specific niche so when it comes to you know 
longevity and just sustain sustaining it i found that i have channels that are just based off of search results that rank really high on like evergreen topics those channels really like generate a lot of revenue and just a lot of views over time mm -hmm. um but when you're targeting browse features you're kind of just waiting on youtube to promote your video but not to say that's not going to happen if the content's great you you know you did the formula mm -hmm. did the equation you got the answer you're gonna you know you're gonna see that result and typically yeah. most of my clients they're like they all do like browse feature content and not a lot of them not really like focused on search mm -hmm. although that's like if you like want guaranteed like consistent views the search engine is always going to be that yeah and then when it comes to evergreen content like what's what's the right way to think about it and, and what i mean mm -hmm. like why i'm asking is because i'm sure you've noticed common denominators in terms of like the people who win fast and win big mm -hmm. and the people who kind of struggle for a little bit longer mm -hmm. so what are some common denominators you've seen in terms of you know either how they're thinking about creating videos or how they're thinking about picking their niche for evergreen content like mm -hmm. what are the common denominators of people who have success kind of quickly that you know so when it comes to that quick success typically or momentum initially the, yeah. yeah they typically leverage the relevancy Mm. It's usually something that has like it has to be a super relevant piece of content that's also evergreen and current event going on like a World yeah. Cup for example or the mm -hmm. NBA Finals or LeBron something. James doing the all time scoring record like that's evergreen that's something that's gonna be watched forever right although it's like you know um, what do you call it uh, um, I forgot the word like it's time like, like time like, sensitive or? yeah like 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 a not a news article but. Um, it's like it's, newsworthy current yeah, affair. Yeah, current yeah. event. That's yeah. what it was. Okay, yeah. So like a current event, um, and so current events can be evergreen. It's really it's really rare that they are. Um, but for my students that have seen that success with the evergreen videos, typically it happens fast when they don't try and reinvent the wheel or try and be innovative. Mm. If they see it's already working, and I literally told my students this other day, I said, <laughs> "Look, look at these two videos, guys. Same channel, completely two different videos." Roller coaster, scariest roller coasters in the world, right? One roller coaster thumbnail, same color, sliding down like a water park, right? 7.5 million views, right? Seven year old video. They posted, five, they posted it two years later, right? So this other video is five years old. Mm -hmm. Same exact roller coaster, but now it's going down skyscrapers, right? Mm -hmm. Same similar title topic, eight million views, wow. and it's two years later. Yeah. So history repeats itself really fast on YouTube. If it's worked before. Generally, it's going to work again, especially if the, there's an audience for it, mm. right? So when those students find that, like, quick success, it's because somebody's already, like, done it for them. And the reason why I always say this is as long as you have a competitor on YouTube, you have a blueprint. Mm. Yeah, because you can model what's going on. Success yeah. leaves clues. Exactly. Instead of trying to start a blue ocean and start from zero, right? right. It's about taking something that exists and mm -hmm. then kind of adding that X factor to do it uniquely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Very smart. Yes, sir. Now, what about people who are listening to this and going, holy cow, like, this is awesome. But, you know, I'm no producer. How much does this cost to start? Like, how much capital do people really need to get the ball rolling if, if they want to start, get the ball so rolling? So there's two ways. One, you can leverage your time, mm -hmm. right? Um, and when you leverage your time, you can make the videos. And then once the videos generate revenue, you can leverage that revenue and put it back in the channel. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to just the videos in general, like I said, a budget's not really it, the budget's not really crazy. Um, I, don't, I don't think people should start off going all in on like two hundred, three hundred dollar videos like I yeah. do now and produce like <laughs> high quality content. Start with the you know the forty two or forty two dollar videos, fifty dollar videos because you gotta think about it, right? It's not really hard to create. For example, celebrity news, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say we're talking about a popular celebrity that's always in the blogs. We just take a bunch of like clips of them, right? The editors, right? The, the team that's super cheap, super easy for a video editor to find those clips. Mm -hmm. Super easy, super easy for a script writer to create a script about that. Super cheap, and it's very, very easy for a voice actor to just narrate that. No, mm -hmm. you don't even have to have a personality to do videos like that. Like the voice acting doesn't have to be amazing. It just could be a narrator saying, "Oh, so this happened in this today, right? Mm -hmm. With this person, so on and so." And then the thumbnails really are simple too. So mm -hmm. with that budget, like that's like you you really can get started with just fifty dollars. Like if you have that budget to start and then you see a video take off, just do what I did. I had a video, mm -hmm. I paid fifty dollars for it, made ten thousand, I then took eight thousand dollars from that and I bought 160 more videos and it made me half a million dollars. <laughs> now that's not gonna happen for everybody, right? right. And I didn't make ten thousand dollars every single video. I'm absolutely not saying that. 
after I made that $10,000 video and I bought all those other videos, those videos typically made anywhere from $2,500 to $3,500, sometimes lower, sometimes higher, which accumulated to that $466,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it all started from that $50 seed. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's impossible. It's likely. Yeah, I mean, hey, you got the formula. It can work. Yeah. But it really just depends on understanding what you're going into, understanding the relevancy about it, and, and just knowing that it's a topic that people are actually going to tap into. And it could work for you. That's powerful, man. And then also, too, like I know people, if they grow their channels, they could potentially exit them. They could do oh brand goodness. sponsorships. So it becomes like this own, like you said, like a digital real estate investment that just exactly. kind of scales on its own, builds momentum, compounds on its own. And then you're not dependent on that talent per se because you can always find a different editor, different voiceover exactly. actor. You can keep it going. Now, what about in terms of talent from different countries? What are countries or platforms you notice mm -hmm. that have the best pools of talent? Um, overseas in 2023 personally I think Fiverr is like my favorite in Upwork yeah um, I typically use Fiverr over Upwork because my teams do the Upwork stuff for me now mm -hmm. um, but I, I notice in the YouTube automation space a lot of people really favor Upwork because you can kind of create your own structure and stuff like that and you can literally see where people are from on Fiverr it doesn't really tell you where people are from you just kind of have to guess where they're from um, but I've seen great work from India um, and I've seen bad work from India too, but I've seen, I've seen great, like the, yeah. the channel I told you about that's doing really well right now, $42 videos, the team's from India. Mm -hmm. So, and they're doing a great job. Um, I've seen, you know, people from Pakistan do really great work, mm -hmm. like really, really great work on those channels. Um, even people from just like Mexico, like so many different places, even if you go to PH, I think mm -hmm. it's ph.jobs. Mm -hmm. So people from the Philippines do it too. It's, it's. I've seen a lot. Oh yeah, jobs.ph. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of people um, see success from that too. So yeah. I wouldn't really rank like a specific like country on what's the best quality because even people in Nigeria too are good. But it really just depends on being willing to test and try. Yeah. Right, and 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 the person being successful in a specific topic. If you see that a script writer typically writes scripts about sports, you probably don't want to make a channel and hire them for like dancing videos or something like that, right? right? You want to make sure you, you keep them in the lane that they know how to drive in. Right, so, yeah. yeah, keep them in their superpower. Exactly. Very cool, man. Now, the last question I have for this as it relates to it is when you look at the landscape of 2023, 2024, obviously YouTube is owned by Google, right? The world's largest search engine. YouTube is the world's largest video search engine. You know, where do you see the opportunity going with faceless automated YouTube channels into 2023, 2024? I strongly feel like big companies are going to start to notice it and mm. really put their hands in the bucket. Like, I, I think <laughs> that that's what's that's what's going to happen next, because it's it's peaking right now. It's like at an all time high. It seems like every other day there's new people popping out, you know, talking about it. And I just think that it's a really big opportunity for just even big companies that already have, you know, because if you think about it like this influencer marketing is mm -hmm. so powerful like people will pay top dollar just to get on a youtube channel because they know mm -hmm. that the audience like knows and trusts that channel right and so the moment that these big companies realize that and they start to kind of like you know i can see them start to buy out channels and leverage it just to promote their businesses more because they know that the dollars generated from it is going to be like astronomical yeah 100 so. percent. and they're seeing a lot of advertisers leave traditional television mm -hmm. and traditional media and you're even seeing a lot of hollywood celebrities start their own podcast start their own oh, yeah. youtube shows so they see the writing on the wall yeah yeah i love it and then you have control over it you have autonomy over it exactly you can pivot adjust tweak whereas on networks or big corporations they can't pivot that Set fast yeah 100 yep. percent. all right and then for people out there listening man you know mm -hmm. one of the things that we we always ask guests on the show men and women from all over the world in their 20s 30s 40s 50s whatever it is a lot of people may have these dreams, these ambitions to make their dreams a reality, right? Obviously, you've done it with YouTube. Ten years ago, you had no idea that would be your vehicle. So what advice do you have for people out there on how to make their dreams a reality, whether it be in YouTube automation, whether it be in, you know, whatever it is that they're doing? What advice do you have, I guess, to the younger David who was once looking for answers, trying to find his, you know, multi-million dollar idea? Man, um few things you know your circle is your influence really um the people you surround yourself with are always going to motivate you and really influence you to do certain things to get to where you want to be at so the number one thing you have to do is change your circle if it's not correct and also just you know if i was talking to myself 10 years ago 
I would literally tell myself to find somebody to mentor me so I can get to my destination faster. Mm -hmm. Like a mentor is literally the fastest way to success. It's literally a shortcut to success, a straight blueprint. Like you're literally telling me everything I need to do, mm -hmm. A to Z, I don't have to make any mistakes. Oh my goodness, I made so many mistakes over this past decade, like over this past decade on YouTube. And if I just would have known some things that, you know, I didn't know, I probably would be way more successful now than I would have been way faster. Yeah. So just really understanding, like, you know, get in somebody to teach you how to do something, whatever it is you want to do. Doesn't matter if it's sewing or whatever, just learn from somebody who's good at it. Mm -hmm. Don't don't just try and do it on your own, because a lot of times we try and do things on our own. And even still to this day, I'm pretty sure we both try and do things on our own. Right. But we know deep down, like, if you just invest in that person that's going to help you get to that destination, it's going to be way faster and you're going to save time and you're going to get to enjoy your life. I love that. Yeah. And I have a homie who told me something. He said, leave the bread to the baker. Right. Leave the bread to the yeah. baker. Don't try to bake your own Don't bread and the process burn down the kitchen. <laughs> Now, I know you also have a challenge coming up and people can also sure. follow you on social media. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, where people can sign up for the challenge to learn more about how to do some of this stuff yeah, and find sure, you on sure. social? Yeah, so we got the YouTube automation challenge coming up. Um, it's ytachallenge.com. You can go ahead and I'm sure uh, he's going to put the link down below so you guys yep. can grab your ticket. Um, it's going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome five days. It's a five day virtual event, something I've never done before. Um, and I'm basically going to allow you guys to come into my world. We're going to sit on a Zoom call face to face. You guys are going to literally get to pick my brain. I'm going to get to teach you everything from A to Z in that five day virtual event. Literally going to help you guys monetize your channel, build your dream team like the perfect team before the challenge is over you're going to be able to build your team right and just walk away with a skill that i am going to give to you that literally helped me build six and seven figure youtube automation channels that literally create passive income for me and my family for generations so uh definitely tap into that if you want to get at me on instagram and you know follow me it's at david omari with the verification check and yeah man that, that's how they can tap in perfect i love it bro well there you guys have it we'll put a link down below and then the last thing we do in every interview is we play a quick game it's called first things first okay we wrap up every interview this way the way the game works is i'm just going to rifle off a quick word or phrase you just have to tell me the first word or phrase that comes to mind so think of it like a quick word relation game mm -hmm. the only rule is that you can't repeat yourself twice okay make sense yeah all right so number one youtube life number two financial freedom money uh, number three the biggest thing that uh you think holds most people back fear the biggest limiting belief you've had to overcome uh stop me <laughs> uh limited belief uh it's, it's not really a word but i'd say like using time to make money mm. uh investing in your first mentor uh detrimental mm. idiot uh, best advice you've ever been given um yeah, every you cut your page every day. You cut your paycheck. My dad told me, you cut your paycheck every single day. Hmm. Worst advice you've ever been given? Um, <laughs> go to college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the worst mistake you've ever made on YouTube? Oh my goodness! Uh, clicking a link from a PC cleaning company, thinking that they were gonna pay me three thousand dollars for an ad, and they hacked the channel and took it. And by the grace of God, I got it back. Um, but yeah, getting hacked on YouTube. Wow. And then the first time a YouTube check blew your mind. The the five thousand dollar check. Definitely. Off that video. That was crazy. Even well actually I I'll, I'll go back. The first five cents I saw at the register when I was working at Macy's, like the first time I refreshed my YouTube dashboard and I saw the first nickel. Yeah. That was what blew my mind really. And then the last one I got for you is what was it like to the first time you made your first million bucks? knowing that your parents once doubted the dream and then now you made it a reality. What that felt flex, like for you? A flex. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> just a flex because I, I have twin sisters that are doing amazing. I have a lawyer um, and I have a CPA and they both, my sister just got her master's and my other sister is, you know, in a law firm in Delaware and, you know, just super successful. So for me to become successful, you know, doing it my own way and still meeting up to there, it's just amazing. So I love it, man. Flex, man. I, I love it, man. Well, Dave, thanks so much. Appreciate for you out. so much. Oh, thank, thank you for having me. For watching, make sure to follow David and who knows, you may just be able to live your dreams as well by pursuing it, whether on YouTube or otherwise. And I hope David's story encourages you that you too can live strong, live with passion and go make those dreams a reality. Until next time, we'll see you guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, give David a follow. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.